Over the last hundred or so years, humans have built some incredible feats of engineering. We have everything from skyscrapers as tall as you can imagine to dams able to hold back millions of gallons of water. Throughout this time, though, things didn't always go according to plan. With such rapid innovation, you're bound to have things go wrong from time to time. From the nuclear meltdown at Chernobyl to a massive dam failure, here are five of the most expensive engineering mistakes. Nuclear power plants have been a source of controversy for as long as they've existed. The argument of risk versus reward is nothing new to this field. Yes, it is clean energy and sustainable. However, if something goes wrong, you could get what happened at the Chernobyl power plant in 1986. On Saturday, April 26th of 1986, near the Ukrainian city of Pripyat, engineers at the power plant ran a test on reactor number four, simulating a power failure. It was intended to aid in the development of safety procedures concerning water circulation in the reactor. The simulation lasted about one minute, but during this time, the power dropped to nearly zero. Rushing to control the unexpected drop, the operators were able to restore partial power. This put the reactor into an unstable condition. As the operating instructions did not provide details about this type of scenario, the operators continued with the electrical test. This triggered a reactor shutdown. But a combination of unstable conditions and reactor design flaws caused an uncontrolled nuclear reaction instead. The sudden energy release vaporized the cooling water and resulted in a steam explosion that blew the roof off of the reactor. With the reactor core exposed, it caught fire, releasing radioactive contaminants into the air. This fire continued to release radiation for days until the fire was finally extinguished on May 4th. Radiation contaminated surrounding areas and even drifted into other countries. To this day, the area is still uninhabitable. After years of investigations, sometimes hindered by the communist Soviet Union, it was found that there was a significant flaw in the design of the control rods that were inserted into the reactor to slow the reaction. The bottom of each rod was made of graphite instead of the neutron-absorbing boron carbide. Additionally, the rods were 4.3 feet shorter than they were supposed to be. Because of the graphite tips, neutron-absorbing water was displaced, which actually sped up the reaction. So, unknown to the operators, the control rods did more damage than good. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a suspension bridge in Washington State that spanned the Tacoma Narrows Strait in the Puget Sound between Tacoma and the Kitsap Peninsula. Following years of construction, it opened for traffic on July 1st of 1940. The bridge received a lot of attention because, at the time, it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world behind the Golden Gate Bridge and the George Washington Bridge. Unfortunately, the story of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a short one, having a lifespan of only four months. On November 7th, winds of more than 40 miles per hour blew across the bridge, causing it to rock and shake in a very violent manner. It continued for some time until some of the cables started to snap. With the weight being distributed to the other cables, it was more than they could handle. The bridge gave way causing the road to fall into the water below. Video taken on that day showed the terrifying effect of the wind on the bridge. From the beginning of its construction, it was becoming evident to the workers that the bridge was too flexible, even under moderate winds. Construction workers actually gave it the nickname Galloping Gertie because of how much it would move. Due to oscillation effects and the loose construction of the bridge itself, even a slight wind was enough to cause the bridge to move. When you compare that to 40 mile per hour winds, it makes sense why a disaster of this magnitude occurred. Luckily, 
No one was killed, although one dog did die. Back in the 1930s, the Zeppelin, or blimp, was a very new and unique method for travel. Leading the way in this field since the early 1900s was the country of Germany. However, after World War I, they became popular tools of the government for spreading propaganda. Along with branding the Nazi swastika on their fins, they would regularly fly around cities blasting march music and political speeches. To further promote the Nazi party, Germany constructed the largest airship ever built, the Hindenburg, named after former German President Paul von Hindenburg. On March 4, 1936, it made its maiden voyage and received extensive media coverage. Unbeknownst at the time, there was a major flaw. Originally, the Hindenburg was designed to use helium, a non-flammable gas. But, at the time, the only supplies of helium were controlled by the United States, who refused to export. So, Germany had to go with a much more dangerous alternative, hydrogen. On May 6th, the Hindenburg was completing a transatlantic flight from Frankfurt, Germany to Lakehurst, New Jersey. The weather in New Jersey had been choppy that day, but after waiting for suitable weather conditions for half a day, the captain decided to make an attempt to land. Suddenly, towards the tail of the ship, the outer fabric started to tear, and the ship burst into flames. Several eyewitnesses reported seeing sparks in some places. The ensuing disaster was caught on a newsreel. Of the 97 people on board, there were 35 fatalities, along with one ground crewman. It has never been fully determined what the cause of the crash was, though many theories have been put forth, claiming everything from static electricity to engine failure. However, the decision to use the dangerous hydrogen gas instead of waiting on helium was the costliest mistake of all. I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure we've all heard about the sinking of the Titanic. It's one of, if not the most well-known and talked about maritime disasters in history especially once the movie came out. In 1912, the Titanic, which had been dubbed an unsinkable ship, made its maiden voyage from Southampton to New York City. At the time, it was the largest ocean liner in service. In the early morning hours of April 15, 1912, just four days into its record-setting voyage, the Titanic entered an area of ocean that was notorious for icebergs. Unfortunately, the captain was focused on setting the record for fastest transatlantic crossing, so he decided to continue on. This decision would end up costing him his life. Just before midnight, the sky was clear. The watchmen on board spotted a large shadow in front of them, which they knew must have been an iceberg. After sounding the alarm, the captain then began to turn the ship, attempting to avoid a head-on collision. Moments later, they struck the iceberg with a passing blow. An underwater spur of ice scraped along the starboard side of the ship for about seven seconds, leaving an opening in the hull only ten feet above the bottom of the ship. Two and a half hours later, the ship was gone, along with over 1,500 passengers and crew. The wreckage was discovered in 1985 off the coast of Newfoundland. Many questions were raised as to how such a large ship could have this happen from such a small sliver of ice. It was then discovered that the side of the hull was much weaker than the front. Some pieces recovered from the Titanic's hull plates appear to have shattered on impact without bending. Additionally, the steel plates held together on the hull were held together with double rows of rivets as opposed to three rows. As they were already at their stress points before the collision, the iceberg pushed it over its limit. Between 1924 and 1926, engineer William Mulholland oversaw the construction of the St. Francis Dam, a curved concrete gravity dam designed to create a storage reservoir for the city of Los Angeles. 
It was an important part of the city's aqueduct water supply infrastructure located about 40 miles northwest of the city. After the dam's completion in 1926, water began to fill the reservoir. But problems arose almost immediately. From seepage to cracks in the dam itself, every month seemed to be met with a new challenge, and it was all leading to one terrible event. On March 12, 1928, just before midnight, the dam suffered a catastrophic failure. Although there were no surviving eyewitnesses to the failure, it was determined that it wasn't a gradual failure. The entire dam collapsed at the same time. This resulted in about 12.4 million gallons of water being released into the San Francisco Canyon, causing a wave that was 140 feet tall. This wave was incredibly powerful, destroying everything in its path. After traveling for just over five and a half hours, the wave washed debris and bodies into the Pacific Ocean, nearly 54 miles away from where it started. At this point, the wave was almost two miles wide and still traveling around six miles per hour. It killed 400 people. Multiple investigations concluded that the failure in the dam was due to the dam being built on an incredibly unstable foundation. From the beginning, there was seepage under the foundation, eroding some of it away. Eventually, this led to failures in other areas of the construction until the dam was unable to bear the pressure of the billions of gallons of water. When completing projects on this scale, the small details are of extreme importance. As we just learned, when things go wrong, they often do so on a massive scale, leading to countless amounts of destruction. Be sure to click the link on screen now to check out another one of our videos. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.